DocuPod, the stories behind documentaries. People always say, when did you decide you wanted to be a writer? And I never wanted to be a writer. I just wrote. What Ursula was having to navigate was the societal prejudices against science fiction, against the fantastic. I'd like this not to be resigned, but to be rebellious. I want to see science fiction step over the old walls and head right into the next wall and start to break it down, too. Welcome back to DocuPod. I am Tiffany, and I am joined by Arwen Curry, who is the director of the gorgeous film Worlds of Ursula, Kayla Gwynn. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks. No problem. Now, this film is just a labor of love, a decade of filming Ursula. I want to get into the origin story. How did you come across her work as far as her being a great science fiction writer? And how were you able to sit down with her for the decade of filming her? And just what did the process behind this film look like? So I was a reader of Ursula K. Le Guin from childhood. So I knew about her for a long time before I ever conceived of this film. And, you know, as a reader, I was one of the people who was really entranced by her worlds, her fantasy world of Earthsea, uh, which are usually the novels that get into kids' hands first, and some of her grown-up novels as well. You know, when I was in about my mid-20s, I started thinking about kind of getting the first inklings, the first glimmers of possibly making a film about her. Um, it wasn't a 10-year process sort of, of filming from start to finish, um, unfortunately, maybe, but it was more a process of bringing the film to life by trying to raise the money, by trying to gather support and momentum. So, you know, it was, I guess, more like fits and starts than one long continual path if that makes sense. No, definitely. And you mentioned the fundraising. You had a successful Kickstarter. Congratulations on that. What was that process like? The Kickstarter process of fundraising for my film was uh, really exciting. It was a whirlwind. Anyone who's ever done a crowdfunding campaign knows that you kind of enter into another dimension where you're just living and breathing this fundraising experience. You have to get comfortable with asking people to support you and and give you money, and that takes a minute. And you have to be prepared to really push it for a month or so. Um, But what I discovered was this really vibrant, excited community of readers that, you know, I knew that she had um, an incredibly devoted fan base, but there I was kind of face to face with them and, and meeting them. And those are the people who ended up supporting my film. So it was great to be able to kind of bring all those people together in one place. And I still am able to communicate with this group of people who's kind of a core base of fans for Ursula Le Guin. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking when you were illustrating it. I'm like, wow, to bring all these readers together, because, of course, you have book clubs and different things like that. But for the most part, reading is is very done as a solo activity. So to bring all these readers and super fans together to create this project, I just think that that idea is so cool. Like these people are all super fans and have read so many of her books and it's like oh now we get to come together to make a documentary I love that yeah I think one of the things that was really clear to me is that you know people feel very close to her they still do and they did even more when she was alive or you know I don't know but but there was something about wanting to kind of be closer to her and participating in making this film so that that experience of being in the room with her seeing her on screen would be accessible. And so I'm, I'm really gratified that I was able to help make that happen. And it was because of their help in large part. And when you presented the idea to her, what did that kind of look like? So I had been dreaming about this project before I ever approached Ursula about her participation in it. And obviously that was a big part of it. And had she said no, I, I don't think that I would have gone forward with any kind of project. So I, I wrote her a letter and she was always trying to answer fans and trying to be accessible to the degree she could. I had the little benefit of a friend in common with her who said, you know, you're going to get this letter from this young filmmaker and you can, you know, maybe take her seriously. So I think that helped me a little bit. And then, you know, from there on, we just kind of eventually met and talked it through. And she decided, you know, at some point to really put a lot of faith in me to go ahead and make the project. I love it. And do you have a favorite memory of filming with her? I, it was so wonderful filming with her because we went to all of these 
physical places that had been very meaningful to her in her life and that inspired her her novels. And so we went to the desert in um, southeastern Oregon that is one of the least populated places in our whole country. It's, you know, w- wild packs of mustangs run around and huge branches. And we walked out on these uh, volcanic rocks together and she kind of showed me and the other members of the crew this desert landscape that had been so striking to her when she first encountered it and that had inspired her novel Tubes of Achuan. And it was just so wonderful to watch her kind of come to life in a landscape and have that connection. So I have many wonderful memories of filming with her, but that's the one that comes to mind right now. So, so good. And then as far as for you in making this documentary, what did it teach you either professionally or personally about yourself? Well, one of the the things that you see unfold in the story that we tell in this documentary is of a woman kind of coming into herself as an artist and her path was to come into herself as a woman artist, as a feminist writer. And in order to do that, she had to kind of examine her own work and the times that she had not really written as a woman. She had been writing as a man, because that was the dominant voice that she was accustomed to reading when she was growing up. And she, she had to kind of learn how to revision her own voice and take criticism in and kind of turn it around and grow as a writer and as a person. And so this is a lesson I, I think about all the time in my work and in my personal life is how to not just accept criticism, but to move forward with it to allow it to help you grow. And I think she was a really great teacher in that regard for me and for other people who watched that play out. Definitely. It's such an important thing, especially, unfortunately, in today's day and age where it seems like criticism is just everywhere, but really yeah. trying to grasp it in a way that makes sense and helps you is is so, so important. Before we get into the screenings, anything else you want to tell the people about this film? Well, you know, I would just say that Ursula's voice is, I think, really important to us now. And she asked us to imagine different worlds. She asked us to imagine the kind of society that we want to live in. And I think a lot of us are trying to figure out how to do that as it pertains to climate change and living together across great political gulfs and, you know, war and all the things that we're facing. We need to have really daring imaginations right now. And I think that her work really shows us a path forward with that. Definitely needed right now, man. As far as the screenings, this Sunday, March 31st at the Sebastopol Documentary Film Festival, and then going to Florida, Canada, Los Angeles, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Phoenix, Arizona, then back in the Bay Area Thursday, April 11th in Berkeley, California, then Florida, Colorado, Hawaii. All these dates are going to be in the description down below. You do not want to miss this film. The website, of course, is worldsofukl.com. All the information is going to be there as well. Thank you so much, Arwen. Thank you, Tiffany. It's been a pleasure. And as always, thank you so much for checking out this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that follow or subscribe button on whatever you're listening on. And then down there in the show description is going to be the screenings and more information for Worlds of Ursula K. Le Guin, including this weekend at the Sebastopol Documentary Film Festival. And then reach out to me. Just say hi or let me know what your favorite part was. I'm on Twitter at Special Says and on Instagram it's at Special Says as well.